mommy hey you made a permanent home in my head you moving like a goddess come my way my way my way your hips on the move only a real one can do what you do i caught a body but you was the shooter damn shot me down one time one time wanna hug me down long time funny how the love can change sometimes so we say a pack of tobacco i'm pulling up on you let me show you my world oh. she told me that i make her feel
know what I'm getting into. Yes. Yeah. And nothing can stop me. No. Cause I'm addicted to what you and I the sound thing. Test, 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 test. There we go. Testing, testing, testing. All right, good. Hello, how are we doing? We're back. Boom, 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 uh, I love this time of year. I love this time of year because it's it's the holiday season. And as such, I love it when I am able to give my favorite people, that's you, something to look forward to in the holidays. And one of my favorite um, favorite creators. Tom Ford dropped a new fragrance today that is just wow. The microphone's not on. Let me get the microphone now. Okay. Let's see. Let's check before we get into this shit. Let's check. Testing, 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 testing. All right. So that's what I hear. Let's test to see if we see the audio over here. Audio. Test, test, test. So, let's see. Before we get into it.
Test, test, test. So, there we go. So, uh -uh. my favorite time of the year is officially back. And what is that? My favorite time of the year is holiday time, the fall season. Fall is my favorite time of the year because of many things. We get to get all kind of new goodies and stuff out. And one of the latest goodies that came out is a fragrance by Tom Ford. And this one, let's bring the lights up a little bit. Let's get the spotlight on. This one is called Ebony Fume. Let's see if we can get the camera any more tight on that. There it is. Tom Ford, Ebony Fume. It is Palo Santo. Back up. Palo Santo, which is Hollywood. Incense, papyrus, uh, Cade oil, rose oil, violet leaf, guyac wood, and ebony woods. Bottom line, it's it's a fantastic fragrance. If you've been around Tom Ford fragrances any length of time, this harkens all the way back, uh, all the way back to his first work in 2007. 2007 it, and here's the thing it's not an it's a dark fragrance but it's not like a, it's not a dark smoldering fragrance it is very wearable and I have been getting responses from around the plant around the globe on this one it is so sexy think of something like Joe Malone myrrh and Tonka something like that or something like um Nasamato Pardon it is so, so, so good. But let me go ahead and uh, dim the spotlight a little bit. I don't want to take too much light up here. And I want to get into something that I think is going to be very important. First, guys, let's keep the likes up, folks. We should have over, over 3,500 likes already. So, and you know what happens if we don't get the likes up? We go to... So, we don't want to do that. If you haven't joined my Patreon, you want to join Patreon every Thursday and Sunday. We have family reunions. We have full interactive meetings to our only Patreon content. And there are some exciting things happening in the Patreon group. You want to be involved in the Patreon group because especially for what's happening into 2021 and beginning of 2022, you can't just be a Johnny come lately and get involved. Membership has its privileges and early adopters get first benefit. So avoid the rush. Don't wait till you hear all the dope shit that's about happening at Patreon. Then you think you're going to join because it's first come, first serve. Just like members on the channel. That's number one. Number two, how's everybody doing? How you doing? Did you have a good Halloween? Are you ready? Shirley? Big Shirley, how you doing? Big Shirley, winter is coming. Winter is coming. Guess what? Have you been out to get in the, have you been getting the hey big heads? Because they know winter is coming. See, hot girl summer has, lead, has has given way to broke bee winter. Hot girl summer transitioned into fat girl fall into broke bee winter. And that's where we're headed. So now you're starting to see all these women who uh, have not been prioritizing marriage and relationship rushing and running. And everybody's trying to figure it out. And I think it's incredible, especially on TikTok and everywhere. All these women are trying to figure out why, why aren't guys asking us out? Why aren't the guys asking us on dates? What's going on? What's the future of dating? What the problem is? Oh my God! What's the oh uh, oh? Uh. Chill out. Chill. Your Godfather has you. Chill out. I got the answer for you. The answer is right over here. I call it the D twenty. Dating. Just like marriage is becoming a more exclusive or more elite institution, 
and dating ladies, here's why you can't figure out where the dates are because you've pushed all, because women have chosen to focus on the top 20% of men. The top 20% of men are the only ones you will even see. And I just accept that. Gentlemen, if you're in the bottom 80%, understand this is why you can holler at her on TikTok, on, on Tinder, get in her inbox, do whatever, try to be the nice guy, insult me, whatever it is. And I think a lot of you guys think by insulting me, you're going to gain brownie points with them. They don't want you. They want men in the top 20%. And I just act on that. Ladies, men of value, high value men, productive, competitive, successful men. I'm going to use the term Henry's high value men or Henry's are going to, you know, when I talk about high value men, it's the six characteristics, but for the sake of tonight, we're going to just talk about D 20, the top t dating in the top 20% of men, the men that you ladies would actively compete for the guys who could step to you and you'd actually clear your calendar for. You need to understand something. The men in that category are actively looking for a relationship, but they are doing it in a different way. They are doing it in a different way. If you are not in a D20 man's sights, it's over. Why is it over? Because you don't want the men that fit for you. You don't want the... You know, I was talking to a friend earlier today and all the professional women who are, you know, upset and they can't find men on their level. It's because if you're a professional, successful woman, just like a professional, successful man of old, you got to settle. You got to marry down. You got to date down. See, we fully well expect a man who is a, a boss to be able to do like Robert De Niro and marry a bartender. But women who are bosses want men who are bosses. And that's not how it works. But I'm not even going to speak to that. I'm going to speak to the kind of men that you ladies want. And here's the thing. I'm going to break them down into, into several categories. The refined category, the rakish category, and the rogue. The pretty boy, the bad boy, and the roughneck. Understand something. The roughneck doesn't fit into d20 the roughnecks are the guys that you have fun with but the roughneck is not a guy you would actually walk down the aisle with take his last name and have his legitimate children so pretty much you are you are categorized women want men in the refined category and the uh, bad boy category and what is that they're just different shades of the coin blue collar white collar whatever it's very simple Women want men who make them look good to other women. Women want men who make them look good to other women. And those are men in the top 20%. And the higher up you go, if you go from 20 to 15%, understand something. You're narrowing the field, which means you're increasing the, increasing the price. To the top 10%, you're narrowing the field and increasing the price. And the men in this group look at a certain look at certain women and say it's over for you. Which women are, is it over for first? Masculine women, it is over for you. These men don't want any part of a public relationship with a masculine woman. They don't want any part of a relationship with a woman who is going to compete with them for supremacy in the relationship. Meaning, if you categorize yourself as a boss chick, a bad chick, a de uh, all this other kind of stuff, um, for, for marriage, it is over. And what am I saying? I said at the beginning of the year, I'm going to be focusing like a laser on the years between 30 and 40 years old. Because it's you ladies who are going to have to really understand where you're at. You still have options, but you're running out of time. But I'm going to talk about the kind of men that you focus on that you want. And I'm going to let you know whether or not they likely want you. This is why so many professional women have a problem with me, because I openly tell them that the kind of men they think they should be aligned with don't want them. 
Now, it doesn't matter whether I'm telling the truth or not. All they have to do is look at their phone, look at their DMs or their emails, and they don't have these men trying to holler at them. They don't. So, boss chick, bad bitch. You're, if you if you like, uh, if you think what Lizzo and Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion and all that shit, that ain't that ain't they don't want you. You know what they want? They want be these men want Beyonce. They want Beyonce in the in the sense that Beyonce is a is a professional woman, a woman with who can get out there and be just as sexy as anybody, but does it with a modicum of class and sophistication. But they want a woman who can keep her mouth closed and keep their business private. Ladies, if you gotta if you gotta run the social media for, for validation for attention every 15 seconds, these men are not looking at you. Uh, there was a book called, uh, what is it, The Possibility of Sex, written by author Alan Roger Curry. And I want to, I think it's in this book, he talked about the concept of no free attention. That's a no free attention has been, has been popularized around a lot of places. And I've heard it many different, in many different shapes and forms and fashion. But attention is currency to women. You hear lots of men who are talking about attention is currency, but the men you want, their attention is currency as well. Men don't want women who are dangers to their brand. Look at all the, the drama and grief that you got happening with Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith. All because of her incessant need to keep it real and be honest and try to up her brand men look at that and say no so if you're a masculine woman if you're a boss chick uh, 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 and th in these kind of realms no now see if you can look at beyonce as the boss chick cool you can even look at kim kardashian if you want to you can say what you want to about kim k but i got a lot of respect for the kardashians for a for a marketing force you gotta you gotta look at the brand kim even though she has her issue with kanye this and that she was not the first one to run out and tell all of her business men don't want women who are going to put them at risk like that so boss chicks big mouth chicks women who want the spotlight also ladies who else is it over for it is over. Ooh, hold on, hold on. Let, let me get, let me, let me take the likes up. Oh yeah, y'all tripping. <laughs> oh y'all tripping. I do it every time. I'd rather a thousand of you guys leave if you can't hit the damn like button. Look, ladies, 
if you're a professional woman, but your goal, but but your whole many professional women today want relationships, and you think just because you're professional you can get it. No, no. Men are looking for women who are putting as much time or as much time and effort into getting a man as they did for that damn degree and their PhD and everything else. And what and what it did, and what I'm it comes PhD. down to is the man's going to ask you some questions. Going to ask you, hey, so so what what do you want to be in the next five years? And if and if you start talking about wanting to have a partnership or own a business or something like this, you you get thrown in the in the in the fun category at best. These men want to hear marriage, children, support, man. I've done what I'm going to do in the corporate world. I've been there, got the t-shirt. Now I want to be your support system. I want to take everything that I have and I've learned out there working in corporate America and I want to take it and for a man like you. And here's how I can help a man like you. This is where woman can do for men. This is what you can bring to the table in the do categories, but also a man looking what you're going to be in his life. Are you going to be an asset? And you cannot afford to be a, you cannot afford to be a, a reformed boss chick and have any other baggage. But if you're a reform, if you're a boss chick, a reformed boss chick looking for a man now, and you have any other baggage, it's over for you. What's other baggage means you're unfit. It's over for you. Because the kind of men you're looking for are don't have time to wait for you to get fit. And they are not going to roll the dice. To, they're not going to roll the dice on the, the fact that you got fit just to get him. He's going to go back and look and see if you have been the same size for the last five plus years. If you haven't. Men are looking for the hustle. So ladies, don't think you can just get this newfound femininity, this chameleon, this doppelganger. You just got this newfound way to get. No, 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 no. He wants to see this like a high value man needs to have a track record of success. You need to have a track record of discipline in your life. And one of the things is fitness. So if you're unfit, ladies, like it or not. Like it or not. What's the next one? If you're a reform boss chick and you are fit, you look good and all this other kind of stuff, but you got a kid. Single mothers across the board are on don't marry list. Just like just like no fly zone and, and watch list, you're on don't marry list. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, even before I, you knew me over here, I would meet a woman who who's a, a single mother and I know automatically I don't care who you are. I don't care how great you are. I don't care how special you are. No. No. That doesn't keep women from, who have children from, from stepping to men. You got to take your shot and you all think that what you bring to the table is going to overcome the one fact you got to answer the question why ain't you with your ex-husband and if you ain't even if you weren't even married you weren't even married it's a wrap if you have a child and you are a divorcee or a widow maybe if you're a divorcee and your husband left you maybe or your husband died maybe but if you are divorced your husband And if you are a baby mama, I'm telling you for the guys that I'm telling you for the guys in the top 20%, they aren't considering it. They aren't even looking at it. And when I'm talking about it's over, it's over for consideration for marriage for these men. These men have every one of you who are throwing something at the screen right now saying you're different. Understand there are a thousand of you and 10,000 that are better than you. For everything that you, th everything you say you bring to the table as a possibility for a man, he can find it in a childless model. Because remember, ladies, you have chosen the men you want and you want the men who are not build a boo. 
You want the men who are already ready to go. You don't want to pay more than 20% of the financial family load over a lifetime. You don't want to have to work to pay significant bills after you're pregnant. I accept that. I am Mr. Lead with your wallet, which means your accomplishments. I am Mr. Hypergamy. If women should be hypergamous, I'm good with that. I am, I'm all for it. And like I said, any women I deal with, they know they fit in the category. Good. See, but you got to fit into the category of what these men want. You can't, and there is no negotiation. There is no, well, hey, I'm 200, I'm 200 from, what was it? Somebody sent me a TikTok from when they say they don't like 200 pound women. I'm like, Where's the wedding ring of a man of value? You can dance your fat ass on TikTok all you want to. Where is the man of value in the wedding ring? If you don't have a man of value in the wedding ring, and that's what you don't see. You see all these women coming back saying why I'm wrong. All these guys saying I'm wrong. But the guys who are saying I'm wrong don't fit in the category of what these women want. Understand something, gentlemen. It would be better for you to shut up and get on the men's side. Sitting around caping for women who would not even date you is stupid. Oh, you talking down to the women and ain't nothing wrong with bigger women with single mothers? They ain't trying. Look, dude, real talk. They don't want you. They want the men I'm talking about. And the men I'm talking about want something as well. So, if you're a boss chick, you better be a Beyonce kind of boss chick a Kim Kardashian kind of boss chick. In other words, it's about your man and about the relationship and the marriage ahead of everything else, or it's a no go. If the first thing out of your mouth is talking about partners who wanted to build and have somebody to build with and all this other stuff, they ain't trying to build with you. They've already built. They built themselves into what they had to be today to where you just need to be, you need to, they don't need you to build, they need you to be in their life. And again, if you got past those two barriers, are you fit? If the glove doesn't fit, you must have quit. You are not getting in if you are not fit. Not gonna happen. Next, children. All right, if you pass those two categories, let's say you're fit and let's say you're childless. But let's also look at your age. Ladies, if you're over 33, you have to start taking things off the table. It is amazing to me how many women in the aggregate who are over 33 who will tell you they still want to have two and three children. And they are not anybody's fiance. And if you drop the man in, in, in front of them today, six months to a year before they're married, and they want to be married six months to a year, if you're 33, that means you'd be 35 before you start having kids. And that means you'd have to be pregnant for the next five, pregnant for the next five years from 35 to 40. You'd have to stair step one, three, and five. Your you can't, your knees won't even, you can't even drop it like it's hot no more. You can't do what you used to do because your biology, your body is not meant to be carrying three and five, three kids after 30 plus. Argue with the creator, argue with that. But men look at that and say, damn, she may be 35. Whew. I want, I want three kids. And if you, so if you cannot produce the amount of children a man wants and he, sorry, ma'am, maybe, and well, I got it. Well, maybe I, maybe, maybe he only want, most men do not want one child. So it is your, your mindset. It is your fitness. It is if you have any children and your age. So if you are in your 30s, do you even qualify for a D20 man? And the answer is for 80 plus percent of you, no. Women who qualify for a D20 man are adjustable sixes, eights, and nines. 
That's roughly 20% of the women. Tens, there really aren't any tens up in that area, uh, especially over 30. And in order to be a 10, you have to be a childless woman. There is no woman with a child that's a 10. So eights and nines, adjustable sixes. And for sake of argument, the rapper Sweetie, as attractive as she is, I said in her natural state, she's an adjustable six. That's a woman that can go from cute to pretty if she decides to, just like that. Beyonce, you may not agree, but Beyonce, you can overlay Beyonce's facial structure and Pam Grier's facial structure. You can morph those in and out all you want to. And Pam Grier was always a pretty woman. But Pam Grier was never considered to be a beautiful or a gorgeous woman. That was left for Diane Carroll, Jane Kennedy, Dorothy Dandridge, that kind of stuff. And you got to understand, D20 men don't deal with average women. They don't marry, they don't ma oh, deal with, take their back, scratch, scratch, scratch. They're not going to wife an average woman. Not after that D20, they would have wifed you in college but you didn't want to get with him and build with him. So once a man is D20, you got to at least be an adjustable six. A, an adjustable six, a childless adjustable six that is fit. Not on some boss chick, whatever, whatever, whatever. And this is why so many women get angry because they know they're in a position to where they can't go back. Well, I'm an attorney. Can't go back. Well, I'm a doctor. Can't go back. I'm a nurse. Can't go back. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm busy. Can't go back. But I look good. So what? So what? The market is open. And women worldwide have been made to understand that dating is harder today. The dating market looks bleak for the average woman. 50% well, 50 of women out there know they have no shot because the men they are qualified for from a sexual marketplace value standpoint, they don't want. And these men are starting to take their attention away from these women. So you can't even get free attention from these guys. And ladies, if you don't like the market, understand your mothers and your mother's mothers made it this way. Men do want, D20 men want relationships and they are actively looking for them with women who fit their, uh, fit what they require. A woman that I'm talking about right now is a feminine asset. I've been watching, re-watching the Born Identity, the Born series. Keep talking about spin up the asset, spin up the asset. Are you a feminine asset? A feminine asset, a woman who's a net asset. Uh, shout out to Jen London. Feminine assets. Feminine assets change the trajectory of any man they're dealing with. They are immediate boons to that man immediate and when a man is dealing and when men are and men at the d20 level get to meet so many different women in business life in their profession in their personal and professional life they understand the women who are assets to them versus the women who want to take and the kind of men i'm talking about they're not even they're not even talking they're not even talking about rotations they don't even want a rotation these guys are they've done they've had the rotations they've had the monday tuesday girl thursday friday girl they they're, they're, they're getting to the point where like, I just want my one, my one and uh, one and then a possible. They're trimming it down. So yes, I'm saying that the guys in the top 20 are going from these big rotations to one to three women they're dealing with. And they're only dealing with the three women because they don't want the one that's on the top of the list to get comfortable. But when it's time to start deciding to uh, marry and have children, which these men want to do, they are going to pick women who are childless, who are fit, 
and whose mindset is about, I want to take everything that I am to put it on your program to help you get what you need to. Something ha- they don't, and, and also, they do not want women who catastrophize. If you're this kind of woman, you're always like, well, yeah, but what if it doesn't happen or it could go this or it could go that? These kind of men do not want to deal with women who are always looking at the worst case scenario. I was talking to somebody earlier today. I'm like, why are women so negative about relationships and always looking for the worst? Well, what if a person gets crazy or this or that? And I'm like, well, most people aren't crazy. And see, as this week, we're going to be getting deep into the sociology and the psychology and the science, but I'm going to make it interesting for you. But I'm going to let you understand why the women who actually bring uh, a certain kind of energy to a man's life are the ones they choose. So you got to physically be in this area. And then, ladies, understand something. If you're in this zone, then you got to compete. You have to compete when you're in the zone. You can't just sit on there and say, he's got to find me. He's got to find me. No, he don't have to do nothing. You must compete for him. You must compete for his attention. You must learn how to shoot your shot. You must learn how to, uh, like when I was over uh, talking about the, you know, I was talking about if I put eight of you in a room and two of the kind of men you want, and I got a pencil, a knife, and a stick, and she's going to sit there talking about, uh, what, you want me to do something to another woman? I'm sitting there looking, and I'm like, you, you, you want a man of value, and you're not even willing to offend the woman? Recording in progress. For women who think like that, it's over. If you can't even get your mind around the concept of competition, it's over for you. I don't care how good you think you look. I don't care that you have a PhD. PhD. It is over for you. And when it's over for you, I need you to understand it's over because you think you are something that you're not more valuable. You're not that valuable. Not to these men. Because what you what you bring to the table that you value so much, these men don't value like that. They simply don't. These men do not value what you bring to the table like that. So here you are with your PhD, your desires and everything else, and you don't even have a cookbook. I don't need a cookbook. You don't think you should have to compete. And you're in your mid to, you're in your uh, early to mid thirties trying to get a clue. And these guys are going on about their business because they've seen so many women like you. They're like, they're not even dating you no more. Want, these guys don't even want to have sex with you. Because the, the, the cost of having sex with you is trying to get rid of you. And it's too much trouble. The three or four times they have sex with you is not worth the problem of getting rid of you. Oh, shit. The, the three or four times they have sex with you is not worth the problem of getting rid of you. Because when they're done with you, they got to block you on all social media, They have to have an exit strategy. Then they got to worry about your hurt self going to your Facebook or your Instagram, talking all this shit about him, saying that he did this or did that because he ghosted you or just said, this isn't going to work. It's you or me. The, the, The three to five shots of JJ you give him ain't worth it. It ain't. And this is what a lot of women are starting to grapple with. It's like, well, wait a minute. I can't even give him none. No, because he knows you got a kid. He knows you're undisciplined or unfit. Or he knows you're un. He knows you're big un. (laughs) Don't want to be single no more. I'm just single. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) I'm just single and I crush a lot. (laughs) Oh, my God. You're a big un. How many ladies out there are big un, big unmarried, big undisciplined, big unwed, big unhappy? You're big un in the chat room. Everybody type big un. A lot of you are big un. Do I need to bring in big Henny? A lot of you guys are big un. 
A lot of you are bigger, and a lot of you biggins are biggins. I got beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, rams, hogs, dogs, chicken, turkeys, rabbits. You name it! Shirley, you know you big un. Shirley, Karen, Brenda. We got Shirley. We got Karen. I'm going to need another name. Uh, Shirley, Karen. I'm going to come up with some more. Shirley and Karen, y'all know y'all big uns. And ain't nobody going to wait for you. So, if it's over for you, what are your options? It's over for you with the men you say you want. They don't want you. They're not going to accept you. And the message has gotten out around to where men worldwide are, are starting to stand on their square and say that they don't have to feel bad by saying, no, you can't shame them. You can't guilt them. You can't do any of this stuff. So what you going to do now? Either you accept the men that are on your level or you have another option. You could always go. You can always go uh, GG 2.0. What's GG 2.0? Glad you asked. Golden Girls 2.0. Golden Girls 2.0. What is starting to happen in uh, Western civilizations where the marital rate is dropping and the single rate is rising exponentially? Women over 30 are starting to buy homes together because if you're a florist and you own a pet spa and you you know all you entrepreneurs and business people but you're still making less than fifty thousand dollars a year the average woman the black woman makes less than thirty thousand dollars a year it's you and her and her and her i was looking at a story in northern california where seven where seven women went in and bought a home together it is like a sorority house of old chicks. And all you see is middle-aged cat moms all on the lease living together. That's a possible future for you. That is a possible future for you. Uh, we're going to need to get, let's see, I'm going to look and see what's going on with these, these donations and contributions because I see that. I see one, two, three. Hold on. Shout out to Mike Evans. It came through with that. <laughs> Mike Evans came through with that. The big bomb. Mike Evans is extreme sponsors. Wow. But see, here's the thing. I don't delete that. Uh, message deleted. What? Mike Evans, that, sh that message shouldn't be deleted. Okay, so here's what I want you guys to do. Before we open the call line, I, I love when folks like Mike come in and, and drop something like that. But there are over, um, over 10,000 people in here. I'm going to need 20 people to drop $20 on it. If you've never donated to this before, and you and this kind of, I've heard people say that, man, you thought Kevin would have fizzled out by now. He's only getting stronger because I sit down and I talk to psychiatrists and psychologists, sociologists, history professors. I read. I don't just get up here and talk. I study this stuff. And if you guys appreciate the content and you've never donated, uh, it's time for you to do, donate something to the stream. So while we love when, when folks come through and, and make the big donations, I mean, you got to love that. You got to love that. But I want to also see the folks who come through and put something on the wood. Put it out there. It's not Mike's job to carry the rest of the stream. Uh, so, yeah. Y'all want the call line to open? We got a call line minimum now. That's right. Because now we're going to start getting to the point to where women you can call in. You go to the green room, you're going to be screened. Your video must be on. Gentlemen, you've been asking, can you call in too? Working on that as we speak. But here's the thing. This may not, this, you may not like this, guys, but I need you to follow me. You need to, if you're going to call in, you need to be in the top 20% of earners. 
If you're not verifiably in the top 20% of earners, not for these segments. I don't, I don't mean that you plan on being you're in college. That doesn't mean you're not valuable. It doesn't mean that you can't watch, but it just means that you need to fall back when I do this portion because we're going to start having more women and men talk. So ladies can understand it's just not me. And understand something. It is a better outcome for everybody when women who are in the 80%, because if, 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 if you want a man in the D20, if you want to date in the top 20, you got to be in the top 20% of women. And if you're not in the top 20% of women that these men want, then you can't have them. They don't want you. There's. N uh, let me also say this to you, ladies. Hear me now. So many women have been told to dream big and so forth. There's nothing you can do to get in there. If you don't have the looks, you can't get in there by another means. You cannot say, I don't have the looks, but I have the money or an education. Doesn't work that way. You have to have the look. If you don't have the looks, you cannot get in there and keep it. And if you think being, and if you just want to be a side chick to these guys, that's up to you. But side chicken gets old. Here's the call line. So let's talk about it. Um, Self-awareness is sexy. The remainder of the year in 2020, the remainder of the year in 2020, I'm going to be focusing on self-awareness and experiences. Not just mixers and, and, and meetups, experiences. Self-awareness is the best thing that a man and a woman can have. I know who I am. I know my faults. I know my shortcomings. I know how I know what works for me. And I have people around me who keep my head on straight. And I, I can run that too. Who is keeping your counsel? How do you know? Uh, how do you understand your level of self-awareness? Who's judging that? I mentioned this on Friday and I'm going to be announcing it again. But going uh for the rest of the year i mentioned the self-awareness assessment put together by friend and colleague jeff liscomb over prison perspectives coaching um i'm going to announce it now but for the remainder of the year there's going to be a package that we put in together where you get 45 minutes of his time and an hour of my time. And it must be worked that way. You see him first, then after you do your self-awareness assessment, the, the breakdown, he and I will sit down and go over the results. And then you and I will sit down and discuss what you want to get accomplished in your one-on-one -on -one session with me. That will be up on Wednesday. I don't do sales. I don't do value meals, anything like that. But what I'm going to be doing is on Wednesday for the holidays, I'm going to be putting it together and there will be a limited supply of those packages. And you must buy them as they are. And you must see Jeff. You must see Mr. Liscom first. Then you must see me second. All right. Appreciate everybody jumping in there. Here's the one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching session. So let me read some of these. Uh, let me read some of these uh, donations. I mean, read some of these super chats because I think I think it's pretty fair to say that I don't really ask much, but I do want folks to go ahead and, and at least understand something that I am. You'd be amazed, probably at least three hours out of the day. I'm reading articles, books, uh, white papers, all kind of stuff to 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 got, to bring you guys more than just my opinion. My opinion is, is valuable, granted, but I want to give you stuff that you can rest assured that it's backed up with the relevant facts, data, statistics, observable reality, 
so that you can feel comfortable making a life affirming decision based upon it. That's why I am so critical and cautious about what I put forward on this channel, because whether people like my method or not, it's not going to really deviate and it is being shown to work. I want people to be able to have a, a different outcome. Um, Jada, go ahead. Let me go ahead and uh, mute this. If you want to get on camera, if you want to get on, you, uh, Jada, you need to unmute yourself. Okay, I should need to Hi, unmute. Can you hear me? Sorry. Okay. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am well. How old are you? I'm 26. All right. So, what do you have for me? I, I have the subject of it's over for these women. Um, uh, is that shocking for you? Um, is it shocking? No, not really. Um, I feel as though we kind of set ourselves back. I can try to speak for myself mostly because I was in a situation myself where I lost, I would consider it losing a good man. Okay. Um, and I had to kind of fix myself first and realize what I actually did to lose this man. And I realized that, children? wow, I don't have children, no. Okay, so what do you want as an outcome? Um, as an outcome, I just, honestly, I really just want to build a family. Um, I'm not really into having a high value man, so yeah. to speak. Um, I just want a family. I want to build a future. I don't want to be alone. I don't feel like I should have to build alone. Okay. Um, pl plus seeing my parents grow up. Well, it's me growing up seeing my parents, like they've been married for 25 years. So how many siblings I'm do you have? To... Brianna, Brianna, you go up next. Brianna, go ahead. Uh, si how many siblings do you have? I have a brother. Well, we have different dads. So I'm I'm my mo I'm my parents' only child. Okay. Uh yeah. I'm gonna make one suggestion. Let me make one suggestion. Okay. Ditch the eyelashes. <laughs> You ladies, need to, you need to understand. We do not like those things on y'all. I don't know why. Where <laughs> y'all need to stop this, please. Men of me, I get emails every day saying, "Please, in a nice way." I'm just gonna come straight out, please. Um, Brianna, how are you? Hi, um, I'm doing you, fine. Stay on, Jada. How old are you? Okay. Oh, I'm 23. I might be too young. I'm not sure. Do you, do you have any children? No. Okay. So it's, uh, I said it's over for these women. What do you think about that? Um, Did you watch the entire program or are you just joining in? No, I watched the whole thing. Um, I guess for high value men, um, they probably are, or like mostly well, just because they don't- understand I understand when I say high value, value, high value, it's more than high value. It's the men that women say they want. It's men mm -hmm. who make enough money to where a woman's money is not really going to impact the family. It's men who women uh, feel financially secure with. That's not just high value men. That's but that's men who are. It's more than just yeah. being a fifty fifty partner. I've been doing this show for over a year and a half now, and the men that women say they want want something, and they don't all have to be quote unquote high value or rich. Hold on. Um, Kasha, how are you? Keisha? Hi, yeah, it's Keisha, actually. How, how are you? I'm fine in you. Is that how old are you? I'm 23. 23. Uh, yes. what, do you, what do you think about the topic when I said it's over for these folks? What do you think? Well, I actually would like to know if it's over for me too, because I'm okay. 23 and I'm actually working as a nurse. And uh, I actually wanted to get advice from you if it's possible. All right, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. You're working as a nurse. You can always book your yes. own business. Um, so you got to stay on my topic. Do you have any kids? No, I don't. Where do you live? Um, Canada. Okay. Um, well, we're not doing that part of it just yet. We're going to stay on my subject. Okay. Uh, Brianna, she muted herself. And what happened to this lady? Um, now, Brianna, do you want to be married? Brianna? Um, yes, I would. Okay. Uh, were you raised to be, were you raised to, how were you raised to prioritize relationships? I would say not at all, actually. Okay. 
All right, Cologne, what is it's this name? All right, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Working as a nurse, you can always book your yes. own. Hold on, hold on. This works. So, okay. stay on my topic. Do you have any kids? Okay. No, I don't. Okay. Where do you listen? See, y'all, okay, don't, don't nobody say nothing, just look at her. Y'all see this person right here? You came in here with your, your YouTube open. You got to turn your YouTube off and pay attention. Unmute yourself. Come on, please. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you? Okay. How old are you? 30. All right. What do you think when I had to say, is it over for these women? What do you think? I did not <laughs> listen. I was doing a uh, few things. So I apologize. <laughs> this is my first time on. I'm so sorry. Yes. First time on live. So sorry. You have any kids? I have one. You married? Uh, divorced. Okay. Um, well, why, okay, so what made you decide to join the panel? Oh, I always listen to you. I just, um, just right now, doing um, homework and a bunch of other things. Uh, so, but you, I, did you have anything you wanted to join the panel for, or you just? Um, not yet. I just started listening, so I'm going to continue to listen. Oh, okay. and All right. So, raise my all right. Um, no offense, but if you guys are going to join the panel, this is the interactive part of the show. It's not the place to just kind of join to hang out. Uh, Jada, uh, Brianna, you guys stay unmuted until I mute you. Uh, pretty Jackie, is that your name? We're going to let you fall back. Unmute yourself. Go ahead. Uh, what is the question? What is the question? Why are you I'm here? <laughs> oh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Huh? I'm sorry. Um, I think you're. Um, you were saying uh, women. Now, how old are you? Women. How old are you? I'm 34, Kevin. He said, "I said it's over for these women." Yeah. Okay. Yep. And you yep. and you want to know why? I just want to know what you have to think. Of, what do you think about what I said? Did oh you like yeah. It? You got me nervous over here. I I didn't think I was gonna make it here. But uh, hey, Kevin, how you doing? Hey. Um, thank, you. thank you for all you do. I really appreciate you because we don't have a lot of men who's telling us what we need to do and everything like that. But um, maybe I think it's over with because um, I'm a big advocate of education and I feel like some people are just not, um, you always talk about relationship skills and I believe we don't have that, um, you know, due to family and upbringing and everything like that. When you that. say education, what so, do you mean? Like, you know how some, you know, um, like from my experience, I can only speak from my experience. Um, I'm so nervous um, when um, these relationships I have had, I find out sometimes it could be a pattern or it could be um, I respond different to certain type of men mm -hmm. um, with a common spirit. Uh, but if they like who have anger issues, I may respond or react different. But um, I'm nervous. I mean, okay, okay, well, you got to learn how to calm down because my question is these relationship skills and things like that, where did our grandparents and our great-grandparents go to, to learn all this stuff? Hmm. See, we're, we're, so, we're so trained in the black community to think education. And where do you go to learn how to deal with people? I feel like, how do you learn that? Um, You're supposed to learn it at home. Yeah, it starts You're supposed to learn home. it at home. And, it, and were you raised with your mom and dad? Yes, yes, sir. Was, are they married? Mm -hmm. Are your mother and father married? Uh, They did, right at the end when he passed away. He knew that he was going to give Okay, so kids. in other words, no. Well, they did. They literally okay, married. Okay, okay. when I say, were you raised with your mom and dad, the implication was, did your mother and father do it what was considered the right way? They decided to get married, and then they were married, and they were married for a length of time, and then they decided to have children on purpose, and they birthed children into this world on purpose with a plan to raise a healthy, functioning family. Um, no. Yes. Well, hold on. I'm so sorry. Right. Um, so, no, no, no. Okay. Well, that's a big part of the reason why. Because so many of us were born out of the out of results of just 
fun, sex, and no one teaches anything. How do you learn if there's not a family? See, if we had families and were born into families, you would learn how mother and father interact because you'd see it. And you'd also right. see your aunt and uncles. Right. And you'd see your cousins and everybody else. Then your teachers and people at school all doing the same thing. Right. In the black community, it, right, you I see a bunch of singles. Yeah. And we have to have role models. So I think that's why a lot of women appreciate you for even, you know, helping us all out and everything. So Okay. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is get to Melody. Because you're just overly okay. nervous right now. Okay. Hello, Melody. How are you? Good. How are you? Can I not be on YouTube? Uh, how old are you? I'm 24. What do you got on the topic? Uh, I agree. Um, um, like, I agree that it's over for some women. I was actually at a cottage with a couple of friends this weekend, four girls, and I was... Uh, one of them is married and the other three are single, including myself. Um, and uh, I was showing them some of the, your kind. You know, I have a shoulder on you, you know? Just mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. just pop, pop, really pop. negative feedback. Um, Who was, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're, you were in college with a bunch of women and you showed them my show and they were negative? Yeah, mm -hmm. which I was really kind of surprised. No, 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 no. Really hold on, hold on, hold on. These women you were in the, in the college with. Uh, were were they all under a dress size six? Yes. Were they all over twenty five? No. So they're under twenty five. So two are twenty five. One of them, I don't know what her age is because she's not my friend. She's just a friend of one of my friends. So I'm gonna assume she's twenty five or twenty six. Okay. And you guys are in college for what reason? Uh, one of the girls' birthday. Okay. And all of them unmarried. One of them is married and pregnant, and the other three are unmarried. The ones that disagree were unmarried or not? Yes. What did they disagree with? Um, just like your tone and said that you were disrespectful. And I was like, wait. So, but, so? I asked okay, them I'm disrespectful. So what? Watched... So, so what? I'm disrespectful. So. Do they have any? I mean, I'm I'm to, I'm just to the point to where that can't be a reason. Simon Cowell is disrespectful. Gordon Ramsay is disrespectful, and you you got uh, all kind of black women on TV all day who make a living off being disrespectful. Is that so a reason? I, Go ahead. So, um, when going over your content with them, one of them just completely disagreed, like completely, mm -hmm. completely disagreed with you. And then I was able to get, uh, I was actually able to get two of them to decide to try out, like, um, I was specifically showing them your shoot your shot video because I was like, okay, well, they keep complaining about, okay. you know, the market is so terrible and all that well, kind of stuff. Hold on, let me, let me, I'm going to try to get everybody involved in the conversation. Okay. Ladies, why do you think so many women who are unmarried and obviously don't know how to get what it is they say they want? disagree with this content uh jada what do you think um i would personally say at one point in time i disagreed with the content because i didn't want to look at the flaws in myself and the reason why my relationships weren't successful so i feel as though maybe they don't want to take the accountability that they are the reasons why they're single they don't have the man that they want so I, I personally feel that way because at one point I was the same way. And then I realized like once I start watching more and I was like, wow, everything just makes sense. If you just apply it, like just apply it and it'll make sense. But if you don't want to accept something is you're not going to be receptive of it. So well, it's not going to work out. And if, and if you can't accept, if a person can't accept that part of the reason they're not getting what they want may have something to do with them, then it's easier to focus on someone else. Keisha, Keisha, Keisha. Keisha, yes. Uh, why do you want to be? You do you said you want to be married? Yes. Why? Well, actually, because I was raised part of my life as a as a wife, but by my grandmother. Actually, I lived with my uh, my grandparents for my first few years. So, 
I had some of the knowledge of, about how to be a wife, but unfortunately we had to move away with my family, like maybe like 30 minutes away from her. So I lost- right here. Let me stop you right here. Yes. Ladies, listen to the, get a pen and pencil out. I'm gonna teach you guys something. When a man asks a question, get to the FM point. I asked, why do you want to be married? And you're telling me war and French toast peas. I'm sorry. Answer the question like you're in a job interview. Why do you want to be married? Well, first of all, because I don't want to be alone. And okay. I've learned the importance of a man in a house. Okay. And I feel like I've been more in my femininity when I I'm in a man when I have a man in the house with me than when I've been like myself and trying to be feminine and uh, not feminine but trying to be like uh, oh and no need no man strong independent and stuff like that. So I've come to realize that's not my natural self to be. I'm more like the cater um, the cater side and the feminist side of uh, when I'm with a man than when I'm by myself. If it makes sense. I'm sorry, I lost my. Well, it, it kind of does, but the issue you're going to have is your reasons for wanting to be married are selfish. It's all about you. Mm. I don't want to be alone. Granted, nobody wants to be alone. Sure. And I'm more feminine when I'm with a man. Okay. Mm. That's not a winning sales pitch to a man. And what I'm trying to show is many of you ladies it's over for a lot of women because you don't even know why it is you want what you want. And you can't tell a man why you want it. And then it's like, you're going to tell somebody why you want what you want. Uh -uh. I know. That's why I, I was saying earlier that I missed some of the knowledge of my grandmother because the way she raised me, it was really like to be, um, to respect a man in the household. Like just to give you an example, no, I couldn't- no, 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 no. Let me get to somebody else. Okay. Can I, can, uh, but I'm gonna, t I'm gonna just say that a lot of times, ladies, you, you gotta understand, you want what you want. And every woman seems to want these things. But you gotta ask, what are you, uh, what do you, okay, Brianna, you wanna be married? Yes. All right. At twenty, you're twenty three, two, right? Yes. All right. Why do you want to be married? Um. Honestly, it's something I thought about recently, but I guess the main reason is like I want to say like a stable relationship to like have kids later down the line and like. I'm trying to figure out how to explain it. Like, mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out how to explain it without, sorry, <laughs> like, without being, I, I guess it is roles. Like, I don't want to explain it. I'm sorry. You're trying to figure out how to explain it without using roles? Yeah, like, cause what's wrong with roles? I'm used to, well, just now, like, society seems like it's always like roles bad and all that but okay i guess take care of the home take care of the kids that kind of thing work if needed like, husband is a role I don't explain it without okay roles. husband is a role <laughs> husband is a role wife is a role there's nothing yeah. wrong with roles that's part of the problem See, we're trying to have we're trying to have a society where nobody has a role but then women still want mm -hmm. men to be traditional provider men now the first mm -hmm. thing you said is to have kids later on down the line. At what age would when you When I like get married, I mean, I don't want to have yeah, one out of okay. wedlock. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, calm down. What, at what age would you like to have, start having children? I would say like 26, 28, maybe, if I'm married by then. Okay, how many kids would you like to have? Um, definitely more than one. Um, so I'd say like two to three. See, I want you ladies to understand. I want you ladies to understand what men are hearing. Are all of you ladies college educated? Brianna, are you I'm in still college? in college. Huh? I'm still in college. Okay. All right. It sounds very, very, very elementary. What I'm hearing, it's like I want to be married, uh, but it's not really any real thought into it. Nothing real firm. It's more just like pictures like when you think when a woman thinks about marriage just like you guys this 
verbally vomit a collage. And men are very practical. And they're like, what am I going to get? Men are go to the car lot. They say, that's what the car is. Those are the, those are the factory things. Those are the optional things. This is how much it costs. And women go and say, oh, I like the color and how it makes me feel. Men got to understand what they're buying. So you got to learn how to speak men. And the world has told women to learn that men should learn how to speak your language. Um, let me go ahead and admit this other person. Um, ladies, why you want to be married needs to ultimately be about what you're going to be for a man. Whether you're religious or not, a wife's role is to be what? Anybody? Support. Yeah, help me. Help me. Right. So how so if the first reason why you want to be married is something for you, how you it's it's like I want to be married because I want to help my husband and I want to have his children. I want to do for him. It's like your first your your instincts are still for you. I want to be married because of me. Which is, that's what the world has taught you guys. But you need to understand, men are still looking at what is, what is he getting? Men still look at wives as purchases. Whether you agree with that or not, and they're going to ask, what are they getting for their money? Uh, uh, iPhone, unmute yourself. Hello? 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 Yes, hello. Oh, I'm sorry. How old are you? 42. All right. Uh, what do you got on the topic? On what topic? I just I just came in here to hear what you were talking about. So you don't know what we're talking about? You just joined? Yes, I wanted to hear what you were talking about. Why? Well, because of the things that I hear about your topics on women. From where? On social media. On social media where? On Facebook. I don't publish on Facebook. Well, what I'm talking about is how men talk about the things that you say about women. Hmm. What does your husband have to say about it? I'm not married. I'm divorced. Okay. What's the issue then? What's the issue about what? <laughs> well, you say the things I talk about. I don't understand what you're talking about. What is it that I talk about? What is it you hear? Well, wh I'm hearing that there is a tone of the way you talk about women. So I wanted to hear for a myself. Tone? Yeah, like a negative tone about black women. A negative a tone. Negative tone. About black what is women. a neg what is a negative tone? Okay, here here's my thing. Yeah, let's get to it. I feel mm -hmm. that the things that I am hearing about Kevin Samuels is <laughs> negative <laughs> when it comes to black women. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I wanted to hear for myself the th the way that you talk. So what have you listened to of mine? I just started looking at your videos, so I haven't really looked at anything per se. When did you first find out about me? I've seen a few of your things on Instagram. When People did, put little about shorts how long ago, about, about, how, about how long ago would you say? I, I can't say. I don't know. A week, two. I don't know. Is that important? Yep. Certainly. Is. Why? Well, that's, Why not is how, it that's not how we do that. Number one, I asked the question. Why it's important. Uh oh, oh yeah. That's how this works. It's important because if you're going <laughs> to ask me, you call into my show, not knowing what the topic is and you're asking and you, and you came in here with a preconceived notion. I'm trying to understand what kind of homework you've done versus okay. calling into my, versus calling into my show and just expecting me to talk about some tone that you hear on Facebook. Have you done any homework? Have you gone to my channel and watched any videos or content for yourself? Okay, but let me ask you a question. Have you watched them? Don't no, 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 think... no, 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 no. You asked my question first. That's rude. We don't answer a question with the question. That's not how that happens. No.
no, 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 no. That's not how that works. That's not how that works. <laughs> I like to hear a woman make a lot of sound. Woman, get back in here and make me you a sandwich. You know what? I am a strong, independent woman. <laughs> Flash, hear my hair. womanly roar. Oh. Yeah. Did I not make myself clear? Oh, I'm here. No, 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 I'll go home and get your fucking shine box. Are you done? Um. Well, are, are I don't you think done? this is are a conversation. You, are, you, are you done? No. No, okay. I'm not well, done. Well, yeah, you, and yeah, yeah, you are. Because you don't just talk at me. See, I don't know what you thought was going to happen over here. See, yeah. This is the chopper! Gotcha, bitch! Be gone, fuck! I hate you! You done yet? See, I don't know where you come from, but that's not a conversation. Yeah, you see, you're just talking. See, you can talk, but you can't over talk me, and you just talk for like two plus minutes. Look at her, she's still going. <laughs> Shame. 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 You can't tell her that she, as far as she's concerned, she's the aggrieved party. As far as she's concerned, I'm rude. Whatever, I'll do what I want. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at her. She just keep on talking. She don't even realize she's talking to herself. I'm like, it's not a conversation. And the first thing is, it's over for women like this, because we've we have we have we have we have we have, we have we have coddled a world to where women can get in a place where they don't belong, not knowing what the French toast they're talking about, not doing any work on their own, expecting you to come like to do something like a trick point and explain to them like, I owe you an explanation. And you can't even be bothered to take your big ass over to my I videos beans, and watch greens, them. Potatoes, you ain't even done your lamb, own homework. Lamps, hogs, you expect me to come dogs, over here and chicken, say something to you. Rabbit, yeah, girl, you got it. Yeah, look at it. Uh -huh, yeah. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Hey, look at that. How much can you lift with them? Man, you can probably curl a lot with them fingers. Look at, don't get mad at me. I'll be mad too. Blue face, come get your mama with that tattoo on the side of your head. It's over. Men are tired of this shit. And my attitude. Who came over here with an attitude? 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 <laughs> I don't need a cookbook. Oh, it burns! Oh, it burns! Oh, oh. I'll go home and get your fucking shine box. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, shit. You idiot woman! <laughs> idiot woman! <laughs> Got time for that? Flash, Hear my womanly roar! Oh. Yeah! <laughs> I'm here. I hate it here. I've just about had enough of you. I hate you! You liar! If anybody's gonna take that bitch down, it's gonna be me. <laughs> Winter is coming. Winter is coming. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. I just know the sound it makes when it lies. <laughs> run away! Run away! Run away! Run away! It was bad. It, it had nothing. No fire, no energy, no nothing. So next time you decide to call in, remember. So tomorrow from 5 to 7, will you please act like you have more than a two word vocabulary? It must be green, okay? Okay?
<laughs> Look at her. She was just, just indignant. Talking to herself. Just talking to herself. Now I want you to understand the gall it takes to come in here with that with, with that kind of attitude. I just wanted to know what about your tone? I've heard on Facebook. I don't publish to Facebook. Well, I don't. I just, I just want you to explain it to me. Who the French toast to you? I got to explain anything to. Carry your ass back in your in your fun room. Get on the Wii or do something. I don't know why I got to explain anything to you. Get off my show. But no, instead, women like her have been told that the world owes them something. I'm supposed to stop doing what I'm doing to explain something to somebody who comes in here with bad faith and a bad attitude, have done no homework. I'm supposed to sit here and take my time to unprogram what you decided you wanted to hear. And all you were really waiting for is an opportunity to do exactly what you did. Show your ass. So thank you for showing exactly why it's over for such a large group of women. You're disagreeable, chaotic, Un, it's difficult to even exist with women like this. And she's still here. Guys, she's still talking like someone's talking to her. She's still here because this is, they live for arguments. They live for conflict. I want you to understand the face of chaos. That's it. They live for chaos. Peace, tranquility. This is what they live for. Look at this. this she, they enjoy this shit. She will, this will probably fuel her for a couple of weeks. A real conversation? No. Now, how many questions did she ask me when she came over here? At least 15. But the fact that the person who's hosting a show had the nerve to ask her some background questions, this fool gets an attitude and starts running her mouth. Yes, ma'am, you're a fool. You're a fool for acting that way. Exactly. But I'm but I'm making money. But see, the thing is, she's talking to herself. She doesn't even know she's not on the show. I'm using this as an object lesson. This is this woman's 42 years old. What chance do you think somebody her age has to really get her shit together and be of use to somebody other than herself? So they get mad because you sit here and call it out. See, if a man were acting this inappropriate, they got all kind of words for him. Yeah, they all hear me. They all hear me. Put them on camera with her. Put her on camera with her. Go ahead. Look at her. She goes, uh huh. Yeah. Nobody wanted, nobody wants to deal with a self-righteous, angry woman. What do, I just want to know what you have to say about black women. Uh that they need to, if they act women that act like you, black, white, Asian, Middle Eastern, or other, if they act like you, need to stop. Need to stop. That's why I say what your husband got to say about it. And all you heard was what what did you hear? What your husband got to say about it. What your husband got to say about it? What? Yeah, what your husband got to say about it? No, no. See, what happened was, what happened was he was to see. Get to the chopper! And that's exactly what he was doing. He was like, get to the chopper! Get out of here! Get out of here! You cannot be with her! She cannot be with her! Don't you got, don't you, don't you got something to do with yourself, lady? With the sumo tattoos and shit on there? <clears throat> <clears throat> <laughs> oh, you cannot make this shit up. You cannot make this shit up. I'll make you famous. Oh. Oh my right, right there. She's still talking right there. Boop. She's like, am I still on camera? Mm. Well, that's your nene. <laughs> That's your name, ain't them. And you wonder why these young girls can't get married because. Not the bad guy. The bad guy. Oh, oh. Woo. Oh, oh. Fuck no. Not the bad guy. The bad guy. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Fuck no. Why do you put a cigarette on? Like a cigarette light? Remember the car cigarette light is like, somebody do. <laughs> Talk. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody, let's bring them all back in so they can just look at her and laugh. So this is what y'all, this is, 
This is why it's over, ladies. This is why it's over for so many ladies. This is why it's over for so many ladies. Now, see, this is what men are tired of dealing with right here. This is what they're tired of dealing with. This is what colors, this is what is in the marketplace to where men are just like they're tired. You come in automatically saying, well, somebody did something to you. Yep. All right. So let's get on back to the rest of the conversation, Sharon. Let's teach her something. Shall we sing as though she didn't do work on herself? She didn't go do her own homework. I'm going to show you. Hey, Sharon, how are you? Hi, Mr. Samuels. It's actually Sharon. Sharon, sorry about that. How old are you? I'm 39. Okay, cool. What do you got for me on the topic? Well, I'm calling in to, um, I, you're polarizing. Yep. I feel like in my experience, people either love you or hate you. Mm -hmm. And my fiance is obsessed with your show. And when I first started watching you, I was turned off. And over the months, I have, you know, listened. I've welcomed what you've been saying about our community. And I, I recognize a lot of myself and what you've been saying. And I want to say thank you and, and encourage the women that are listening um, that what he's saying is valuable. It's true. It's medicine. And I think that you can help restore the black community with your teachings. Look at her face right here. Look at her face right there. See, look at that right there. See, a, a black woman calls in to say that because the truth often is polarizing, especially uncomfortable truths. <laughs> But versus listening to what a woman who I don't know, but the key word was my fiance, Miss iPhone in green. See, that's why I want you, you see that crass action of that big bitch over there? That right there, that's why you are where you are. You got a black woman on here who said, you know what? I didn't necessarily like it at the beginning. You're polarizing. I accept that the truth is often polarizing. And a woman comes in here and says, thank you. But instead of sitting back and saying, you know what? Maybe I got it wrong. This chick going to act like she's stroking her own Johnson. That's why I tell you women, you big bras to put your dick up because you always <laughs> walk through life like you got a dick. You got, you've got the right one, Bertha. You got the right one today. You sit your big ass right there and you're going to learn something. Cause that's why she's really here. She's here because she wants to learn something because whatever you're doing in your life, ma'am, ain't working. So you sit there with your face all twisted up and you can either choose to accept it or not, but it ain't going to change what you think about the truth. And what I think about the truth doesn't make it less true. I'm sorry. How are you, Miss Bray Bray? Hi, Kevin. Can I not be on you too? Sure. That's fine. Um, I'm coming at you today just to say thank you for reaching out to Black women and really getting us on the right path. I say us, I'm married, but you know, I do have a few single friends and I'm trying to get them in the path of being married someday. So thank mm. you. I appreciate it, ma'am. I appreciate mm -hmm. you very much. And uh, much luck, continued success in your relationship and your marriage. And have a happy holiday. Thank you. See you. And I'm going to say something that, you know, what I think was interesting, I'm not going to show it on camera. This, this woman's face, when two black women, two, two much darker black women than her, so you can't use a colorist argument on me either, come in and say, thank you. One's engaged, one's married. And then she's still over here mad, still over here mad. Why don't you retract the claws, ma'am, and recognize that maybe, just maybe, you don't know what you're talking about. She still has not even, she still, and this is what I need you guys to understand. It's, there's some, in this whole notion of mating and dating game, there's some people who just want to be agents of chaos on the men's side and on the women's side. The truth is polarizing for men. Understand, when the men in the 80s and 90s were told, you're gay, you're down low, you're in jail, you ain't educated, you're not in college, you're not this, you're not that, black men and when we were, when I was coming up, we were told we weren't shit. 
And you know what? A lot of black men had to look at the reality and say, this is how we're being portrayed in the media. This is what we're doing. And we had to do something about it. So black men in my generation bit the bullet and did the work and attempted to be better than what we saw. This is why you have 54% of black men single and childless, 61% in the middle class. Black men are making it in America. But the only thing is we turn to look for our, our suitable counterparts and the black men that I'm talking about, far too many black women look down on these average men. So if when men finally start speaking what they see after 50 years of being drugged in the media and 40 years of being drugged in the media by our own women, Somebody actually on one YouTube channel for one year actually had the nerve to say what men have been saying everywhere. And all of a sudden he's the worst thing in the world. But the bottom line is it's only the worst thing. If you don't want to change, if you don't want any outcome, anything other than you being told you're right, then you want the world to be stuck where it is. Well, I'm glad that more women are getting past the polarization of the truthful message because it was just as polarizing when we had to look at what we were doing. So she can be upset all she wants to. I get it. It's not easy to hear. But the people who are willing to sit back and at least try to hear something other than what they already believe they're going to hear is different. So uh, I'm going to bring her in. Melody, I don't see you. Melody, I don't see you. Uh, pretty Jackie, I'm pretty bring you back in real quick. And then I'm going to get in Jesse Katz. Did you have anything else you wanted to add, uh, Jackie? Go ahead, unmute yourself. Uh, I'm okay. I'm just, um, I've been listening to your shows and I just want to be quiet and listen. Okay, I'm going to let you fall back. And, um, I'll let you fall back. I just want to make sure you've been there for a minute. I'm going to let you fall back. Um, because we have, I want to get more people in the gallery. Um, Jada, I'm going to let you fall back for a second. You'll still be in the waiting room. We can still hear. Jesse, and then next thing, go ahead. Hello. Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm fine. <laughs> Thanks for asking. How old are you? I'm 24. All right. So, what do you have on the topic, or do you have a question? Um. Well, I guess I kind of just have a question. Um. Okay. So, ahead. my whole thing is, I know you you talk a lot about like girls who come from like single parent households or like divorced households or like having like moms who didn't like really teach you that much about like what it means to be like a good wife or like how you're supposed to like interact with people and all the all the rest of that so like my question for you is like is therapy really just like am I going to learn all of that from therapy like if I put myself in that and I like dedicate myself to actual progress and like getting the results that I want to get is that going to be enough for me to like develop in the way that I need to, for me to um, basically be able to like attract and keep the type of man that I want? So what you're asking, if I hear you, is, is therapy a guarantee that you're going to get what you want? Yes. Well, young lady, there's nothing in life that's a guarantee. And that's not why you go to therapy. You don't go to therapy because you want a guaranteed outcome of another human being. You go to therapy to have a better quality of life, to have a better quality of life and have a, so meaning whether you find the man of your dreams and live the dream life you want to, or you live it in a different way, but you still have an enjoy, but you still have a high quality of life, ir irrespective. That's why you go to therapy to address the issues that are causing you problems, the traumas, the things like that, that you may not already recognize, the, the self-limiting behaviors, these kind of things, just to ultimately become self-aware. So then you can choose a life lived on purpose versus going through life, living life uh, from pre-programmed issues and traumas and things like that, that you had no uh, hand in creating. They were just kind of given to you. But the long and short of it, there are no guarantees in life. But here's the, here's the other side. Um, what do you have to lose? Very true. I mean, so well, I watched a, a lot of your videos, like a lot, a lot of your videos. My sister loves you and she told me about you. So I uh, that's how I got interested. And um, uh -huh. I know you always get like really annoyed 
when you don't get to the point fast. So I was trying to like get my question out there as clear and concisely as possible. I'd like to go to therapy because I know that I have things I need to work on and because I'm not satisfied with the quality of my life. And I think I'm finally starting to get like the self-awareness that you touched on where I like realize that there's some shortcomings and just like lots of things that were completely out of my control that are affecting like my quality of life right now and like how I just that's like all, move that's all we can, that's all but see that's all we can do that's all we can do is try to be better than where we were yesterday none of us are perfect men are equally broken equally flawed equally troubled but therapy also gives us more patience with other people because we remember guess what I ain't where I was a year ago because I've actually done some work. It's not about getting a guarantee. It's about actually taking and making the most out of this little bit of time we have, regardless as to who comes in or out of our lives. Because a lot of times people attract people to the people may be attracted to your brokenness or your or that kind of stuff. And you really don't want people in your life that are attracted to that because that can make its own unhealthy patterns and such and so forth. So self-awareness, being the better version of yourself and being committed to personal improvement, self-development and, and, and growth uh, leads to a better life, personal, professional, all the way around. So that's why I said there's really no downside to it. Uh, but, it but what it is not, it's, it's not reparenting. We don't get to go replace what we learned already growing up. And all we can do is make the best of what we have left. So thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. Um, thank you. I appreciate Bye-bye. Uh, let me go ahead and put you back. Uh, I, other iPhone. Let me go ahead and unmute you. You in the black. Hello. Hi, Kevin. I don't want to be on YouTube. Okay, go ahead. How old are you? I'm 34. All right. What do you got for me? Um, I live in Sydney, Australia. Uh-oh. Uh, Down under. Sorry? Down under. That's right. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Oh. go ahead um yeah so i just i wanted to make a note that angry lady that called earlier in the comment section i noticed that a lot of people are pointing out the fact that she looks polynesian oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i just wanted to say what's happening in the african-american community i can say um is happening a lot with the polynesians as well we've mm -hmm. been sold this lie about <laughs> you know, going out, getting our education, kind of pursuing mm -hmm. careers and things like that and forgetting what it was that made our culture so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that was obviously women being women, men being men, mm -hmm. um, getting and valuing those, those traditional roles. Um, I see it a lot today. It's obviously I bought right into it, into those eyes and find mm -hmm. myself 34 and single. Well, um, and so for what, for what I understand in Sydney, kind of like, um, in Canada, it is even more exacerbated down there because it is of a much more liberal bent to the government. It's ridiculous. Okay. Go it ahead. is it is ridiculous. And everything that's happened over here with COVID as well, you know, the snippets that you're seeing over there about the lockdown over here is just, mm -hmm. it's sad. It's really sad. So I, well, look I, at it, well, look at it this way, though. Look at it this way. That even though you bought, even though we were all lied to and about... Now that now that you're aware of the issues, kind of like the whole Matrix movie, at least yeah. now you now you can at least navigate life and have choices. Versus, oh, absolutely. And, and that's more important. So that I mean, it may not be what you wanted to have up until this point, but at 34, mm. you still got a lot of life left. And now you can live the rest of life on purpose according to your own design versus according to the other agendas that people gave folks that look like us and we didn't even have a choice. They just gave this shit to us. So, absolutely. and it's, I think more people are starting to understand that is it worse that what I'm talking about or is I'm worse than what was given to us? Cause this is a, this is a phenomenon in the West. And I know what I've heard about what's going on down there in Australia and in Canada, it's, yeah. man, and I have clients down there. So I, I wish oh. you the best, um, but, but here's the thing. This is starting a conversation amongst men and women to where we're starting to look at each other with a little bit more grace, a little bit more mercy, a little bit more tolerance and forgiveness because none of really, us were given the right. There you go. And that's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm seeing it with our boys yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, you know, how we've treated them. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm make, the, in make the next part of life better than this part. That's all you can do. We can't go back. All we can do is go forward. 
That's right. And I'm starting with you, Kevin. I'm referring you to everybody I meet. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Have, have a good one. Bye bye. Thank you. Have bye. a good day. Bye. Yeah. Oh, so now let's see. Now we're back to uh, this me and this lady. That has been what? One, two, three, four, five, six women. Six women. When are you going to stop with the frown on your face, ma'am? When are you going to when are you going to start to relax the furrowed eyebrows and realize that maybe just maybe oh it's up to midnight. So what I want you to understand is guys understand something. The tone uh that most people refer is selective. It's kind of like Eddie Murphy uh, we talk, told him about Bill Cosby hearing about his special. And he's like, my kid came home and said, you were saying all these words. It's like, it's like I got on the stage to just the cuss word show. He's like, I, I don't, I curse, but you know, I do manage to tell some jokes in between. You talk about a program that's been on for hundreds, thousands of hours, and it gets whittled down into 20 second bites on other people's channels so they can get views. And you would assume that I'm just sitting here cussing folks out and acting a fool 24-7, 36 well, how'd that work? So, ma'am, oh, are you on a Zoom call looking at me right now? Don't think, don't worry about what you think about my tone or what you've heard on the Zoom or TikTok or YouTube. What about those black women that you saw for yourself? You, ma'am, you, you right there, yes, you. What about those black women that you just heard out of their own voices? in your presence mm -hmm. and therein lies the rub it's only over when women choose to quit you may not be able to get what you want out of life but who's to say what you want it fits you anyway dreaming big is great but but dream but also live realistically this is the holiday season. Life is about people. Life is about families. It's not about acquiring stuff and in individualism. You know, I like nice things, but damn, life is about people. And we're not going to get there just by telling people what they want to hear. Sometimes you need to hear you're out of control. This is why you have female matchmakers quitting. Iana Van Zant on Oprah Winfrey's network talking about, uh, I, I she's being run off by being run off by black women. Yeah. So so like it or not, but gentlemen, I'm also gonna tell you this. Remember, not your you you're not responsible to fix everything. You're not responsible to fix everything. Just not responsible to fix everything. You just can't make it up. So there we go, people. You can't make this shit up. Tuesday night on Instagram is going to be even better. Wednesday show is going to be out the chain. Um, this is a season of self-awareness. I want you guys, ladies, gentlemen, I want you guys to give yourself the gift of self-awareness. And I said this to my Patreon, patrons the other day, and I'm going to say it to the members on the channel too. Commit to the end of 2021, end 2021 strong and start 2022 uh, with a vision of getting self-awareness and self-improvement. Look, what do you need to finish out on 2021? It's over. The summer's over. Hot girl summer's over. It's the winter's here. How are you going to end the year? And plenty of you are saying you want to end it with something, with someone in your life moving forward. You're tired of this. Well, the first thing you got to commit to doing is an unflinching personal inventory of where you're going wrong. Just like the woman I was sitting here trying to talk to. If I could have talked to her, she may have learned something. But she wasn't here for that. She was here for what she was here for. But you still do what you're supposed to do. Life is about people. I'm going to challenge you all. Do not finish 2021 just doing something for self. How are you going to give to others? Do for others. Be of use to others. True value and influence comes from when we are around other people so that was good that was dope let me look in the comment section let me read a few let me go to my stream yards because i know i got some super chats and stuff i want to read super chats i want to read the activity feed here we go uh i recommend we all evaluate and acknowledge the million man march listeners black men ever level up 
Uh, is it just me or the accident? The broken majority of men don't lead to the collapsing welfare state and can't single bother and win out the thing. I guess I'm uh, you can Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm I'm uh what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through uh these super chats. Big Un, yeah, Big Un for sure. Look, man, Big Un, I don't want to be a player no more. I'm not a player. I just crush a lot. Um, stay tuned to the community tab. I don't want to announce Wednesday show just yet, but you're going to want to see it. Wednesday show coming up. That was dope. Appreciate it. Good year. Oh, she's still talking. She's still talking. Just look at my goddamn. Overtime. Hmm. <laughs> How about this? Solo caca. Tiglo caca. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Tune vochikuta. Solo. Ha, 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 ha. Mmm. Tiglo caca solo. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to hell. Santi. <laughs> Tiglo caca solo. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Big pearly. I got beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, rams, tiglo caca, solo, tiglo caca, solo. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, my God. You guys need to stop it. Stop that. You are all going to hell. I swear to God, there are going to be lumps of coal in your Christmas tree. Are you kidding me? I swear to God. How do you guys... Oh, do you, did, you, did your grandmother know you did that? I mean, God damn it. I am... I just, I just don't understand. Does your grandmother understand that you did that? I mean, really? Does she know that you did that? I'm, I'm just saying. Does your grandma know that you were doing this? I mean, my grandmother would not appreciate it if she knew that about me either. My grandma would be so mad if she saw that. Tiglo caca solo. Tiglo. Solo caca. Solo caca. Tiglo. <laughs> Solo. <laughs> Santi. Ah. Chewbacca. Wookie pa. <laughs> Oh, he threw him in the Sarlacc pit. Oh my God, Master Luke, Master Luke. He threw him in the Sarlacc. You'll be digested over the period of a lifetime in the pit of the Sarlacc. In his stomach, you will learn a new definition of pain in the pit of the Sarlacc. Oh my God, Master Luke, whatever will we do? Don't worry, 3PO. The Force will guide us. But, Master Luke, I'm an android. Tiglo caca solo. Oh, La Magra will fix it all. La Magra will fix all. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. The blood god. He's a hurricane. The Magra's a hurricane. 
I need is the blood of 12 pure blood vampires. And I can get my Steven Dorf on. La Macra's a hurricane. My turn. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> wow. I did declare overtime. I did declare overtime. I did do that. I did do that. Diglo Coco. Mm. I got something to tell you. What is your attitude? What is your issue? What is wrong with your tone? I don't need a cookbook. I, did you eat the cookbook? I don't need a cookbook. Are you sure? Hey, somebody go get that. Somebody go get that uh, ultraviolet light. <laughs> Tell me what I want to know, Shirley. Tell me what I want to know. I rebuke. Tell me what I want to know, Shirley. Do you have a cookbook? I don't need a cookbook. Tell me what I want to know. Tell me what I want to know. Oh, it burns. What was we? What was that? Oh, it, it was bad. It, it had nothing. No fire. No energy. No nothing. No, 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 no. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, <laughs> blue face jabba. Blue face jabba. Ah, yeah. So. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That was completely unexpected. But anywho, uh, thank you for all joining. Thank you for <laughs> Thank you all for joining. Uh, if you want to learn how to speak Hutnese, uh, we will be uh, hosting classes uh, on the week after Thanksgiving uh, up until Christmas Eve Eve. You'll be right in time for the Whoville Parade. The Grinch who stole Christmas will be presiding. So learn how to speak Hutnese and we can get right on over to Whoville and have a, a right on time for the for the Grinch who stole Christmas. There you go. Now somebody get Jabba back to her hut. <laughs> you know Jabba the Hutt's twin sister? Who is Jabba the Hutt's twin sister? Anybody want to know Jabba the Hutt's twin sister? Anybody know Jabba the Hutt's twin sister? What is it called? Mm -hmm. Jabba the Hutt's twin sister. Pizza. Pizza the Hut. <laughs> oh my God, that's corny. <laughs> the hood. <laughs>